Now, when you have this implement, it has to be held, or you can't move it. And the grip is perhaps the most neglected of the basic fundamentals. It is neglected for one very important reason, and that is that everybody's looking for what when they hold a club? What would you say? Comfort. comfort. Now, comfort, when you're starting to play golf, means nothing. It's either right or it's not, and it doesn't make any difference whether it feels good, bad, or indifferent. There's a place for these hands that you have to have, and that's the important thing. You must have those hands in that position. Now, what position is that? Well, when you place the club in your hands, you have two different kinds of balances that you have to abide by, and you can't have a good grip if you don't have both. One type of balance is in relation to each other. One hand has to be in balance in relation to each other. Now, what does that mean? That means they have to be palm to palm. If they're not palm to palm, you'll find that one hand will act stronger one time and the other one will act stronger some other time and you'll get a tremendous amount of inconsistency. If they're palm to palm, they will work together better. But you could have the hands together this way, you could have them this way, and you could have them that way. Now, where do we go? Only one place, and that is wherever your hands are in balance in relation to the target line. Okay. Now, if you had a line, a target line, <clears throat> right there, and my hands are in this position, they're not in relation to my target line. As you swing the club through the centrifugal force which you create, these hands are going to be balanced out and they're going to try to get parallel to the target line like that, balanced to the target line. And that's going to make the club head do what? It's going to close it. Okay. Now, if the hands are placed on the, cl on the club so that they're in, in balance with the target line, then you're okay. Now, what does that mean? It means that if I would draw a perpendicular line from this hand, what would it be in relation to the target line? parallel. Exactly right. Now your hands will work in relation to that line and now your chances of hitting the ball square with the blade are very good. Okay? Now there's a way that you can test whether your hands are in balance or not. Let me use you. You're all going to participate, so. Pardon? What do you want me to do? I just want you to be a tester. Okay, you hold the club. Okay, your grip, okay? Now, when the club is moving, it's moving fast, it's creating centrifugal force, and it's pulling, okay? All right, now, just face me, please. All right, now keep your arms very flexible and just lean backwards so I don't pull you over. Okay, let your arms be flexible, but lean back a little bit so I can, okay. Go ahead, lean. Okay, now you'll notice that his club is not changing one bit, is it? It stayed exactly the same as it was before. But let's find out what happens when the hands are not in balance like this. Okay, take the right hand and put it underneath. Not to, you don't have to do that much, just a little bit. Okay, now watch what happens now. As I pull, now don't you do anything. Don't you do anything. Just lean backwards and keep the arms flexible. Okay, see the club is doing what? It's closing. Okay, turn around so I can, we can show it over here. Now, when I was pulling this way before, the club was not changing. Now he's got his right hand underneath. And when I pull, see, that club gets, gets turned. That means that his, his hands are not in balance in relation to each other. Okay? So as the club is pulling, it's changing your club head. If he has a grip like this, the better he swings, the worse he hits the ball. Because he has to have, when it's like this, he has to have a compensating action of that kind to try and keep it square. Well, that's a hard thing to do. You see? Whereas if the hands are in balance the way he had them originally, no problem. He doesn't have to have any compensating act because that thing is never going to change. Okay? Now, if you have, thank you, if you test this, you can test it for one hand or two. It doesn't make any difference. If you uh, are, if you're an instructor and you're, the things look pretty good, but you're not sure, you can test it for the left hand all by itself, or you can test it for the right hand all by itself. Doesn't make any difference. The reaction will be the same if the hands are not in balance. Any questions about the grip now? There should be a lot, because this is a very neglected thing. All right, no the question? position of the uh, club in the left hand? Fingers or okay. 
You can answer your own question. Grab it fast. Grab it fast. No, grab it fast. Don't think. Grab it. Where is it? Right. Same place. When you hit. Now the right hand is a little different because you see in the right hand you have the hand you see on top of the left. So therefore the palm is used up by the left hand. So therefore you grip it what? More in the fingers. More in the fingers. And then again that's just that's a natural thing. Now people who put the hand this way are putting it in the palm. Okay? So you, you grip it more in the fingers in the right hand than you do in the left. Now the pad of the, of the back of the uh, left hand usually is towards the top of the shaft. See, towards the top. It's not right on top, but it's towards the top, okay? Now when you grip the club, you shouldn't go at it this way or this way. You go at it in a balanced position in relation to the target line. So if you have the target line this way, you approach the, the club in that same line. If you do it with the right hand, you approach it that way. Don't approach th this way because once you do that, this little finger gets cooked, hooked in there and then you can't get your hand over. You see? So always approach it this way. The little finger is the one that ruins all the grips for the right hand because everybody's trying to hook it around a lot. And for those of us who are teaching, we take a look at your glove and find out what you're doing with the little finger. And if that soil mark is up here in the knuckles, you've got the wrong grip because the little finger can't get up there. Well, that's going to be my question, and I, you may have answered it already, but I'd just be real clear on it. Uh, the, the last, Here. The, the last finger should be then on the, on the, instead of in here? No, no, that can be. If the spread between the finger, the little finger and the next finger is, is wide, you can put it between the fingers. So you can put it between the fingers like that, but that's different. You ever seen, ever seen anything like that? <laughs> I mean, it's ruining my life, but... That is because you're putting your hands too close together. Too close. You're, you're jamming it in there. And your knuckle of the left finger here is, 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 is using okay. friction. See, I don't get that. See, because I have a little, a little space there. They're, they're close, but they're not jammed. I can only hit about 12 buckets a day. I can see that. I, I can more than 12 buckets a day. That really I, can, I can see that. Now, if you will just spread your fingers a little bit, you can hit 13. Okay. All right? Yes. The heel pad of the left hand be on top of the grip? Not, not, on, not right on top, because if you put it right on top, you're going to have the hand facing down. That's incorrect. Well, of course, you know, pads are pads. They're different. See, well, I couldn't... I notice the soil mark on your glove is more toward the crease in the middle of your hand. Yeah, it's right in there. See? Okay. It's towards the top. It's, see, if I put it on the top, like that, in my, in, with my hand, that's why I say it's towards the top. Depends on the person's hand. The pad in some people is much more prominent than in others. You see? But certainly you don't want it underneath. It's towards the top. It depends on the hand. And again, uh, you know, hands are built differently. And you, when, you, when you're trying to help people with grips, you've got to use the test that I use with you. Because I can say, well, the grip should be this way. But your hands may not fit that 100%, so there may be a little variation, and that club head pull will tell me exactly where you belong. Okay, yes? Someone who has an incorrect grip, how long does it take them to, to uh, change? It depends on them. If the result of the shot is immaterial, and they're willing to do the right thing, they will do it right away. See, I had a person yesterday, as a matter of fact, had this lady that I had never seen before and gripped the club like this. Well, when she started swinging the club well, what did she do? When she gripped it like this? Yeah. So when she started to swing the club well, what did she do with the ball? Hook it. She hooked it. And then I said to her, I said, now, you will be hooking the ball when you swing the club this way. And once you get the ball hooking, little by little, I will change your grip until the hand doesn't affect the club. You know what she said to me? I want to change it right now. And you know what she did? She changed it and hit every ball straight. You don't get too many people that will do that. The first thing they say, oh, I can't hit it that way. It's, it doesn't feel comfortable. I'm sure that those of you who teach are always run into that. I can't do it that way. And they're not willing to take the discomfort and accept it and say, okay, if this is right, I don't care what it feels like, I'm going to change it. Okay? Now, directly to answer your question, it takes a while for a person to change it normally. Unless you have that type of person that says, I'm going to change it. Okay? 
She said, please, let me do it today. I said, fine. Delighted. Grip changes should be gradual. In other words, if I had carried my scheme with this young lady, I would have tried to get her to hook the ball 50% during that lesson of what she did at the beginning. Okay? When she comes the next time, I'll cut it another 50% because the discomfort factor is not going to be as great. If I change it from here to there, they, they, they feel that they can't hit it. But if I change it from here to there, they'll accept it. So unless you get a person like that, grip changes should be made slow. Now, what would happen to a person who grips the club like this and hooks it and you put it over here? <clears throat> they'll slice right away. So what will that do to the confidence in the grip? It's gone. Because they don't want to slice the ball, you see. Now, everybody's willing to hook it, but nobody w wants to slice it. Okay? So the moment that you put in their mind or in their field that they're going to slice it, you've lost them. So you've got to be very gradual. And the person who plays well with an incorrect grip is counting. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Yes, sir. Because if a person plays well with that grip, that means that he's already made the adjustments to that grip and he's got them. But there's a limit to how well he can play. No. 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 If that adjustment is made, and he's made it through the years that he's played with that grip, if you change him, it'll take you another 40 years to get him back to where he is today. Azinger won about $400,000 with a terrible grip. Well, a terrible grip it is only a, really a terrible grip from, from what we look at is only in relation to the player. Non-classic grip. How's that? Well, classic, of course, is one word that you can apply to it. But you have unorth unorthodox swings that work very well. How about Miller Barber? Yeah. Who, can who can say that for him, that is not right? For other people, it may not be. But for him, that's the way he swings. That's the way he plays. How are you going to say to that man, you've got a terrible swing? You bet your life. Now, if you try to change that, you kill his game. And the same thing happens with, a, with grips. Now, I had a gentleman that gripped the club like this. I was a novice in teaching when I went to the, to the club, the, my present club, and of course, you know, I looked at the grips and I said, this grip's got to be changed, see? So I changed this grip. What do you think happened the first shot? What would be your guess? He shanked it. No. What would be your guess, Jerry? What did he do with the first shot? He missed it. He whiffed it. Absolutely whiffed it. Why? Can I reach over there with a... Oh, you have a ball around there somewhere? Oh, here we go. And this is what happens when you want to change grips completely the first time. See, if this man is hitting the ball like this, now watch the position of my hands. Now he has, through the years, he started playing when he was a caddy. So he's built this thing in it. But I don't know this at this time because I've, I've never met the man before. See, so I said, no, he's got to hook everything. So when he comes in, you see, He's got this section right there. Okay. Now, Delatore says, "No, you got to have a good grip." So he says, "You put it this way." So now, when he comes to the ball, he comes in. He does exactly the same thing with his hands. And what happens? <laughs> Goes right by it. Okay. So I said to this gentleman, "I said, now, how much are you going to practice?" He said, "I don't have time to practice." Now, how long do you think it would take that man to change the grip and be able to play as he was playing at that time? His lifetime. It would take him 40 years to break it and 40 years to build a new one. We don't have that much time. So I was smart enough at that time to say, oh, we'll leave it alone. He was a 10 handicapper, played nicely, but he had built into his swing this type of compensation for the swing. And to change that would have taken a tremendous amount of practice, which he was not able to do. So you change grips when the grip affects the motion that you're, you're trying to correct. If the ball is being hit far and straight and you don't like the grip, for heaven's sakes, don't change it. And this applies to all of you. If you're, if you're, if you're crooked, that's different but because then you see some improvement. But you're hitting the ball dead straight and you, you have a bad grip, quote unquote, you'll ruin that person for quite a while. How can you explain a grip like this where a person would still hook it? Well, John Slee used to do it. See, it's what you do with the golf club that's important. See, if I, I can take the club from this, you see this a lot, and they're all slicers. 
you, because of what you do with the golf club again. You see, like I said at the beginning. Now I can, I, from here, I can come over the ball and hit it this way, it'll slice. See? So you can do the same thing with this from here. If you come in and, and you work it that way, you'll hook it too. And you can do it right now if you, if you want to. See? It depends what you do with a golf club. And that's what this whole session is going to be. What am I doing with this golf club? But you can do anything you want. Yes? Why do you just feel like if you take a stronger grip, you're going to hit it further until you get up and well, it doesn't work? Okay. Because you see, you don't, although it feels that way, you see, you're forgetting that that club hit reacts to the hands. So even though it may feel very strong this way, you've got to worry about what that's going to do when you, when you get this feel. See? And strangely enough, people hit the ball much better. I'm sure you, you recognize with if you haven't built it in there, you see, than with this one. Because this is inconsistent. Sometimes you'll get the compensation, sometimes you won't. So you either hook it or slice it or hook whatever the position of the hands are and produces it. See? And, but but nobody, nobody who wants to hit it further ever thinks of taking a weaker grip. That's correct. Well, that. that's right. That's right. It's a feel. And it's it may be right in baseball. You could do this in baseball if you felt that way. Why? Why could you do it in baseball when you can't do it in golf? Yeah. See, the, the baseball's round, so it doesn't make a difference which way you do it. It's going to be the same bag. can't do that in a golf club. You have to learn to use the tool. You see? Question? That doesn't matter. Did you hear the question? No. The question is, what, how do I feel about the relationship between the left hand in relation to being up and down the shaft? Okay? And it really doesn't matter. Now, I like to grip the club so I'm right at the end. When I hit my full shots, that's the way I grip it, right at the end. My assistant, Russell Tuveson, leaves about an inch. He feels more comfortable, more control. He feels more control, okay? Now, I don't like the feel that I get when I grip it short for a full shot. Now, when I play a short shot, I always go down because that's consistent with something small. I want the length because I want a long shot. So I grip it at the end all the time, even my wedge. If I want to hit a long shot with a wedge, I will grip it this way. And then the last question is, traditionally, do the Vs then come right on the top? I mean, yeah, that's what I was going to, yeah, that's what I was going to, and as far as the procedure for putting the hands on the club, I'll bring that up in a minute. And uh, yes, uh, talking about this stronger grip thing, I, the people that I've played golf with who uh, who have what I call a, a very bad grip because they are way behind the club, very very strong behind the club, mm -hmm. they all do seem to hit the ball farther than the people that I know who have weaker type grips. And I and of course they all seem to hook it, and maybe that's why it's going farther. And but it's rolling far. It's not carrying as far. See, a hooking shot doesn't carry as far. And that's physics. See, when you hook the ball, you're giving it this type of, 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 of spin. It's getting away from climbing the, in the air, see? When you hook, when you fade it, it's going the other way, and that kind of spin makes it climb in the air. That's why some people say, well, it's shorter because it stays in the air longer and it doesn't drive through the, through the wind, you see? Now, a hooking shot will roll much further. Now, you take a look at people who learn to play in Texas, in Arizona, any place where you have very hard surfaces and they'll all hit the ball quail high and run it. People who play golf where I've played, which is usually in the Midwest, when you have lush greens and stuff like that, we carry the ball. We don't try to hook it. See? But the ball and the hook always has a tendency to go this way. That's why you can't hold it on the green when you're... If the ball is hooking into the green, it goes all over the green. Okay? Yes? When do you uh, set your hands on the club? In, what, in other words, if you're trying to be parallel or uh, in balance, then you have to can't hardly do it standing behind the ball. Oh, sure. Is that what you do it? Well, that the procedure that I'm going to, to say in a minute will tell you how to put them on there, even though you're not, you're not at the line. Uh -huh. okay? okay? Any other questions about the grip itself? Yes. Do you object to the ten finger? No, ma'am. I do not object to any grip as long as the hands fulfill the two balance patterns. You can have a ten finger grip, you can have a, an overlap. You can have an interlock. I like this the, the least because it breaks the thumb and forefinger combination, which is your good feeling sensation combination. Okay, if you're going to feel my shirt, you don't feel it with the thumb, or you don't feel it with the, you feel it with the thumb and forefinger, and you feel more through those two fingers than through any other two fingers. And Bob, uh, excuse me, uh, Ernest Jones, when he was talking about the grip, he always emphasized the gripping with the thumb and the forefingers. You 
this thing. So I don't like to break the combination. Okay, people who interlock try to interlock like this, and watch what happens to my to my to my right hand. Yeah, you do. Okay, this is more uncomfortable to me. This I can move the hand any way I want to. Okay. But the important thing is that the hands fulfill the balance requirements. That's all. Okay. Uh, there are people who. Yes. One more question. On left thumb. Where do you have that? Any place wherever it, wherever your hand fits it. I don't like it on the top. Now the reason I don't like it on the top is because when I get to the top here, you see, all the strain is right on the thumb in this joint right here. If you put the thumb a little bit on the side, can you see now I'm resting it more on this bone? So it doesn't put the strain on the thumb. And don't forget, when you get here, you're starting at a tremendous rate. And when you go like that and you've got it on the top, you're really jamming everything against that joint. See, where it's on the side a little bit, it, it doesn't. It fits better in your hand, in your right hand, too, if it's a little on the side. If, if it's on the top, it doesn't fit as well. OK? Can the left thumb stop you from going? No. Uh, no. If it's on the top? No. No, that won't have any effect on it at all. Can I see where your left thumb is? On the side. Okay. Okay, the, sh the long left thumb, and of course that depends a lot on the person. I mean, some people have long thumbs and some people don't, you know. Yeah, but but, I, but when you're trying to, all right, when you're putting the thumb down, you're putting the club at right angles to your fingers. It's good for baseball, it's not good for golf. In baseball, and this is why I'm very delighted this young lady said 10 finger grip and didn't call it a baseball grip. Because it's not a baseball grip, it's a 10 finger grip. In baseball, you grip the, the bat like this, right? Your fingers are at right angles to your bat. That's because you're coming at it in a horizontal position right here. But you can't have, you can't have the, the hands at right angles, uh, the fingers at right angles to the shaft if you're going to put it on the ground. You see? It has to be at an angle. Now, if you try to put the long thumb, look what you've done to the fingers and the shaft. You make them very much a right angle to each, at right angles to each other. And that doesn't work with the plane. When you get people that do this, the, the club has a tendency to come in this way at the ball. They top a lot of shots because of that, because this is a very awkward thing to have. OK? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, how can you, as a player, place the club in your hands and have the hands correct? Now, I, sh I showed you before that you should approach the club with the hands in the direction of the target line, not underneath or on the top, from the side. But now how do you place your hands? Do you do this now and go like that, or do you do this and go like that? What do you do? Well, you close your fingers so that the V's that are formed by the thumb and forefinger of either hand or both hands are pointing directly to your center. Now, if I would open my right hand right now, you will see that it's in exactly in line with the target line, OK? You cannot put the Vs on top properly if you put your hand this way and get your finger hooked in there and stretch it. Because when that hand relaxes, what, where is it now? Go right back. So you really haven't done a thing. You still maintain it incorrect. So what you do is approach the, from the side close the fingers, and now you see it stays right where it belongs. Now, how does this differ from the books and the things that you've heard in the past? Where should the V's be pointed? Right to the right shoulder. Now, why do they tell you that? Because most people have a tendency to do what with a golf ball? Slice. Slice. So what they're trying to do with this, they're trying to make you do what as you come into the ball? Close, close the blade. See, I don't believe in that. I believe that if there's a problem with the swing, let's change it. Don't do things that will say, OK, now I do this, but if I change this, the ball will go OK. Somewhere along the line in your golf life, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt you. That's a Band-Aid type remedy. Right. Absolutely. And I don't use that at all. OK, anything now about the position of the hands, the balance? Yes? One quick, it seems like a lot of the pros will come up and they, they'll take the right hand and they line everything up with the right hand and then they start to do it with the right hand instead of the left. Am 
Well, no, it, it's a matter. Of, that's a matter of, of technique that doesn't make really much difference. See, I can pay, put the club there with my right hand, or some people put it with the left hand. I think both are wrong. If you use your right hand, you got to move it again anyway. That's correct. Well, if you put this one on, you got to move it also, because you, you see, you can't leave it there, because then your hand, right hand is going to go like that. See? So the best thing to do is to move away from the ball and take your line from the back or from wherever. See, I t if I'm going to hit the ball in that direction, I put my club here, you see. But, I, but this is where I get my grip. And when I go to the ball, I already have my grip. I never get the grip at the ball. I must have it already when I get there. Because what's the most important thing in the addressing of the golf ball, what really is the most important thing? Getting your shoulders squared No. What's the most important thing? Right, exactly. You see, that's the first thing you want to do. Now, if I go like this and, and, and do that, now what are my chances of leaving the club there when I'm putting another hand on there? Not very good. But if my hands are already on there the way I want them to be, okay, then I go up to the ball. Now, I can move this thing around all I want to, but it's, it's always going to come back the same way because I'm not changing my grip or doing anything. Well, that brings up another good question. How do you set your blade on the ground? A little later. Okay. This is just grip. Okay. How about grip pressure? Equal that's, the th that's the next thing we're going to discuss. How about hand position? Anything about hand positions that, that you don't understand or, you, or, or qu you're questioning? So yeah. you, if you're not comfortable, you don't try to start playing around with your no, sir. bad address. No. What do you just back off? And yes. I never adjust at the ball. I don't care whether it's your line or whatever. If you don't feel right and you go ahead, you will not be successful. How many times you, you say to, to you, gee, that feels a little bit left or right, whatever, and you, and you move it. Now, you may be only a degree off, but when you move it, you move it five degrees. So now you're over here, you see. Never, never adjust. And the same thing goes with your grip. Never adjust. When you go to the ball, you got, everything's committed. You go. So when you take your grip then, yes, sir. you take it from behind the ball or wherever you Move From wherever, okay. it's up to you. Then you, you set your Vs and you, get the grip where you feel it's good, but the, the blade, when you square your blade up then, you're, you're just trying to square with your general direction of your body. No, not right? your body, not your body. Right. We'll talk about when you're we... You're not even at the target line if you're behind the ball. Oh, that doesn't make any difference. You're not trying to get... Not, all you're doing is putting your grip on in the club. You can do it from here if you wanted to. It doesn't matter where you do it. The, all you're doing is trying to, to, to get the, the hands... You see, you haven't got a target line now. You don't have a target line. Right. But you do have the V's on top. But your blade, if the club, if the grip is round, your blade could be anywhere. No, it can only be one way. Because, see, I look at it. So you visualize. I mean, I, I would never take a grip like this. You never do that. No. <laughs> see. So you, you do it visually with. Yeah, the, you, you look at the club head. Remember, that's the important thing. See, you, you set the club head, and then as, when I do it, let me just show you how, exactly how I do it, okay? I'll take the club, and as I'm, as I'm going with my, my hands, I put the, the face that way. Now, I haven't got a grip yet. Okay? Now I can do it from here if I wanted to and put the club hit that way. Now, see, I, I get my grip. So then your, your blade is square with your body. Always. You your grip. Yes, sir. Always. That's the most important thing. Everything you do relates to this. Grip, everything. Okay? All right. Any other questions about this? This is very, as you can see, there are a lot of questions. Yes, sir. Can I see your left hand? Can you look this way and let me see where the left hand is in? Where, how, how do you want me to look at you? Turn this way. See, it goes, you can see the wear there, and you can see the wear here. It comes right right in that line. It's much more in the palm than I yeah. thought. Yeah, no, oh yes, it's much more in the palm than, than yeah. Yeah. My, my yeah. Feeling is Grab this club real quick. Pull with your left hand. Grab it. That's where it is, see? That's just, it's exactly what your golf grip is. Yes? Is there any room, uh, any margin for air in the palm? I mean, if you have it, say, a little bit lower than you had it, can it, can it still be all right? No, not for me. I'm saying for, for Oh yeah. Oh sure. Everybody's hands are a little when different. I, when I put my hand on the way it, it looks like you put yours on, I feel like the club's too high. That may be. 
That may be. It's very individual. And so you as an instructor and me as an instructor, we have to take a look at this person and make the hands be put on there the way that person can do it. You can't stereotype because your hands are, you remember what we were talking about last night? You take a person whose hand is very flat here. See, when he takes it up here, it looks very flat. Now you take mine, the hangs this way. When I get it up to here, what does it look like? It's cupped. Now you can't say this is wrong for me. It would be wrong for Pam Higgins because her hand is built this way. I haven't seen anybody's hand hang like this, though. So will you put it up like that? You see? So you, you, you really have to build a swing with the person's assets and liabilities, the way he's put together. Otherwise, you don't do justice to him or her. We're talking about, that's the next subject. I just want to be sure that the people understand and have no questions about the placement of the hands. Okay. Grip pressure is always in everybody's mind. How tightly do I hold it? Okay. All right. First of all, the best answer I can give you is that you hold the club with sufficient pressure to control the length of the club that you're using and the speed with which you're using it. And that's the best I can do for you. If I would take five of you people and put you in a machine that would measure the pressure which you use to hold the club, how many of you would hold it exactly the same? Nobody. It's different for everybody. Your sense of control is different for you as it is for, and it, than it is for you. And we're all different. So you have to take that individuality and accept it and use it. Because if I say to you, well now, when you're hitting a putt, you grip the putt, putter with a five pounds per square inch pressure. But now when you've got the driver, you use 50 percent, uh, 50 pounds per square inch. I mean, that percentage that you've got in there, how do you know? Nobody knows. Suppose that you played three days in a row, and I would put this machine on your grip. How many times in the three days would you grip the club the same? You don't. You don't. You feel differently. You get, you get a day where you feel very lackadaisical and you haven't had much sleep and you go out there kind of tired. What's your grip? Light. Light. Now you've had a nice sleep and you're going to beat your guy and you're going to outdrive him and what's your grip? Tight. We are individuals and we vary a lot. And all these things vary. Now if you don't fool with them, the variations don't bother you. But if you try to change them, like you say, boy, I would have had this pressure yesterday, I'm going to use it today. You, you really don't know what your pressure was yesterday. So you can't repeat it today. So you just let your instinct take care of that. Suppose that I have you on very heavy grass, it's about that high, and you've got about a 110 yard shot. What's the first thing you will do when you address that ball? Right. Now do you say to yourself, John, you're in the rough, grip it tighter. All you do is look at it, and that look tells your instinct to do what? To grip it firmer. We don't use our instinct enough. It's a very smart item that we have, and we're throwing it away most of the time. Okay. When you grip the golf club, you should have a feeling that the pressure which you use, whatever it is, whatever it is, is equal from the little finger of the left hand to the thumb and the forefinger of the right. This is different than you read. Everybody tells you to do what? To grip tighter with what fingers? The last three fingers of your left hand. Okay? Now, why do they tell you that? Oh, just with the left. Well, either one. It doesn't matter. Okay. Now, just keep equal pressure, okay? Now, if I were pulling you, what's happening to the pressure? Moving forward. Is it? Can you let go with the thumb and forefinger? There can't be very much pressure there, then. Can you let go with the little finger? How about the next one? <laughs> no, if you'll fall on your panty. That's correct. Okay, so what is happening really to the pressure? When, I, when the pull is exerted, what's happening to the pressure? It's getting tighter where? In the middle. In the back fingers. In the back fingers. The club head always pulls the greatest from that point which is furthest from it. Now, in order for your pressure, now put both hands on there. And I'm going to do the same thing. Keep me equal pressure from, the, from here to the back. Now, watch it move back. Right? 
Okay, so you haven't changed it really yourself. It's moved, okay, to the last three fingers. Now, when the pull wanes, now what's the pressure? What is it back to? Equal. Equal. So you really haven't changed the pressure yourself, but it has moved up and down your grip, which is correct. But this is why you're told to grip tighter with these fingers, because that's what happens. But see, in order for these fingers to grip tighter, what must happen? What must you create? Sure. You've got to create the velocity to make the change. If I stand here and I have no velocity, there's no change in pressure. But the moment you pull, now it goes back to this. So you're saying that just happens naturally then? Well, sure. So you just start out with equal pressure? Sure. Feel it. It goes back. I mean, you have nothing to do with that. It's just what happens. And that's why you can take off the finger and the, your index finger. That's fine. But boy, you can't take those last two off. Again, it's just all common sense. If you take a look at what happens, it's not difficult to, to justify the things. But when you have something that takes place because it's a result of something and you try to produce it, <coughs> then, you, <coughs> excuse me, then you run into trouble. Because how tightly would you say you grip when I was pulling? Can you tell me? No. Can you tell me? And what does it depend on? It depends on the speed I'm using. Okay? Well, let me try that again. Sure. What if I were to put pressure with these fingers up here. Oh, you can do that, but then you're involved. Then you're involved. You can do anything you want, but if you leave things alone, yeah. if you leave things alone and you respond to what's happening, yeah, it, goes back. it goes back. You see? So that's where it is. So if it, that's the natural way for it to happen, I shouldn't get involved to change it. Now, as the club is swinging, naturally, that force that you're creating is pulling more and more and more. So your fingers are tighter and tighter and tighter. But now, when you, if you would take the pressure after you hit a full drive and push it over here, I'll guarantee you there's a lot of evenness. The difference here would be that the club wants to fall because of gravity, and you're holding it, where it's not trying to fall here. So there again, you have a little bit of change towards the back, you see, because it's affecting the back part. But when you start, try to keep the pressure the same. Now, what word can we use to have people not fool around with hand pressure? Once you have the grip on the club, as far as each one of you is concerned, what you should try to do is to maintain your pressure constant, whatever it is. So you don't get to here and the pressure gets light, or you don't start out and you get tighter, the pressure on this club, as far as you're concerned, should be retained the same. And you let the motion change the pressure, not by changing the amount, but how it travels up and down the shaft as it is in motion. But as you swing, as you approach the contact area or contact zone, your grip would naturally be tighter. You much, tighter. tighter. Much, much tighter. Much, much tighter. Much tighter. But how much tighter? Who knows? That's an instinctive reaction to what you're doing. That's right. And this is very much like when you're driving down the highway and you see a car suddenly coming towards you, what do you do? I wake up. <laughs> see, you react to that and you act immediately. You don't say, holy smokes, there's a car coming at me. I better do this. You get out of his way, whatever you need. But you don't think about it in terms of the instinct working for you. And this is very much the same way. Your instinct to hold the club will control what you do here because it's responding to the velocity which you're creating. Okay? Any questions about this? Very important because you, you, it's a great concern about how tightly do I hold it. And you can't stereotype. Yes? How does it hurt the swing to uh, hold the extra pressure on the back three? How does what? How does it hurt the swing when you, you do have that extra pressure on the it back It creates three? tension. Yeah. Now try to grip it tighter with the last three fingers. Can you see what happens to your forearms muscles in there? Yeah. Now just grip it the same way, light. I mean not light, but constant, you know, without trying to increase the fingers. Your arm is relaxed, isn't it? Watch what happens as I pull. Does the arm get tighter? No, it doesn't. See, if it got tighter, I couldn't do this to you. See? So you can, you can tighten the fingers, but you don't tighten the arm. When you try to do that with the fingers, you usually tighten your arm, okay? It's all connected.
See, all our muscles and everything are all connected. So when you do something with one, you react to another. If you do it, if it's just a normal response, see, I can grip the club, pull it. You come over here and feel my arm right there. And tell me if there's any change in, in the muscle tone. Not much. Not much. See. Now, if I were trying to hold it consciously, you see. A lot of change. You bet. So. You can do a lot of these things as a reaction, and you can stay very flexible, whereas if you try to do them, now you create all kinds of tension. And I'll guarantee you, tension is one of the killers in the golf swing. Okay? Well, yes. thing about the grip, too. Okay. If uh, uh, a good player, does he grip exactly the same, to within two or three degrees each time? Well, isn't it true that about, say, a four or five degree change in the... Uh, angle of the blade will be enough to ruin a shot. Yes, sure. Where does that fine control come in then? Uh, Are you talking about hand position? Hand position. Oh, no, hand position. No, pressures can change, but the hand position cannot change. It's got to be the same. Now, how long do you think I've been playing golf? 30, 40 years. Pardon? 30, 40 years. How, how long do you think I've been playing golf? 58 years. How about you? How, how long? I go along with that. <laughs> how many think it longer than that? You know. How long have I been playing golf, Steve? Uh, 62. I've been playing golf for six, let's see, it's, it's now almost 64 and a half years. I never put my hands on the club without looking. Now, you would think that after 64 and a half years of, of living with this little thing here, that I would just automatically put my hands on there and be right. I don't trust myself. It's too important. I always glance. And now I, just like I'm here, I'm not hitting a shot at all, but every time I put my club in there, I always glance. I'm not going to let this club change in my hands, or my hands change on the club, whichever way you want to look at it. It's that important to me because my hands control what? The position of the club had an impact at all times. And if my hands aren't correct, something's going to happen. And I don't want to swing well and hit a bad shot because my grip has slipped. And I recommend to everybody that you always look at your hands and Put them the way you know they should be. Now, there will be days, hot, humid days especially, when you put the hands on the way they're supposed to be, they feel horrible. But Delatory says, boy, you feel horrible today, but that's the way you belong, and you're going to stay there. And in about five or six shots, it starts, the discomfort starts going away. But you see, you haven't ruined your grip. Okay? <laughs> so you can see there's a lot to the grip, a lot of importance and a lot of questions. And I think they're very important questions. Okay, anything about the grip that I have not covered or that you have not uh, understood or whatever? Everybody's clear on it? Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to break that combination. Yes. See, I, I kind of just. It's kind of on. It's kind of isn't. That's okay. I have no objection to that. Okay. So I have no objection to that. It's not interlocked. Yeah, I don't have it over like that. Right. Kind of. That's fine. Uh, That's fine. 